Today, today we're going to speak about something very, very important and something that is heavy on my heart and I think is heavy on the hearts of each and every person up here. Um, we're, going to speak, we're going to speak about worship. We're going to speak about worship today. Um, who, who knows what worship is? Who can say, you know what, I can raise my hand and I can confidently tell you this is what worship is. Okay, Angel, I see your hand. I see your hand. Come on. Or what do you think worship is? Or what, right? do you, what do you guys think? I'm not, I'm not going to go out there and, and, and I don't want to put you guys on the spot. But who can say, you know what, I feel like I know what worship is. Um, I know what it consists of. David, I see your hand. Um, we're going to be speaking about worship. And the, and the title of, of um, my teaching today is, is um, or our teaching today is, The One Who Knows It All Still Wants to Get to Know Me. And you may, you may, you may say, well, what does that mean? Like, obviously, we know God knows it all. But when it comes to worship, when it comes to prayer, when it comes to us having relationships with God, it, it, it's, it's a two-way, two-way street. It's, it's about us getting to know God, but it's also about God getting to know us. And that's why I titled it The One, the one Who Knows It All. Because who, how, many, how many of you guys know God knows it all, right? God knows, God knows it all. God knows what I was dealing with yesterday. God knows what I'm going to deal with tomorrow. God knows it all. But even though he knows it all, he still wants to get to know me. Isn't that, isn't that crazy? I don't know. I don't know if that like. I don't know. I was. I was thinking, and I was. I was even asking. I was asking Edwin. I was like, I don't know what to title this. I don't know what to title this talk, um, because I feel like it's so. It's so wide. Like it's such a. It's such a big topic. But it's so uh, broad. It's so. It's so broad. But I think the first thing I want to leave you guys with, um, is just that is God wants to know you. God wants to know you, and even you. You can say like I just said. God knows everything about you already, right? And you're like, well, how does it make sense if God already knows everything about me? Why does he still want to get to know me? Because for, for in order for him to get to know you, um, like I said, it has to be in a relationship. Like, I can't, I, my mom, I can't get to know my, like, I couldn't get to know my mom unless I talked to her, right? Obviously, she knows everything about me. She knew everything about me since I was a kid. But I don't know necessarily everything about her. Or in, 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 with Caitlin in this case, obviously, she's my, she's my fiance, for you, those of you who didn't know. For us... We, could, el anillo, el anillo. <laughs> we, we wouldn't have been able to get to know it. Like, if it was just me trying to get to know her, she wouldn't have been able to get to know me, right? It's a, it's a two-way street, and it's the same way with God. Um, and I wanted to ask, ask you guys, my fellow participants, um, uh, what, to you guys, what is worship? And I say, I ask this because I believe that it is, I was sharing with the guys before we came out, I feel like it's rare to find a young person that truly knows what worship is. And I don't mean that as a shot to anybody. I include myself. I feel like there's times where we don't really know what it is or what it means to worship. And today we're going to answer questions like, what is worship? Um, how many of you guys have asked yourselves, what is worship? Or how do I worship? Have you guys asked yourselves that? How do I worship? What happens when I worship? Uh, who am I worshiping? I mean, that was pretty self-explanatory. But in case you ask yourself that, um, those, so the, those are the type of questions that, that we're going to go ahead and ask, answer today. But I wanted, to, I wanted to ask you guys. To you guys, what is worship? Any, whoever wants to go first. <laughs> I'll go. That's fine. I'm always the one that talks anyway, so it's fine. <laughs> I think, one, I think, for me, it's my... It's my I love you to God. I think God has many ways. Tiene muchas formas en que nos muestra que nos ama, nos demuestra que nos ama. Y siento que worship is like my one way of telling him like, I love you. And it's my way of also kind of connecting. I guess what, what Jazz was saying that, how is he going to get to know Pastor Eric or how is he going to get to know Caitlin? But it's the same thing. Like the Bible says so many things of, what, of who God is and the greatness of God and all that God does but I think sometimes there's reading it and then there's living it and I, when I'm in that time of worship when I'm having my time of worship which can be anywhere at any time I think it's it's that for me it's just being able to have to show God how much I love him and to be able to express that to him yeah, yeah. I think I agree oh. with Gabby oh sorry I think I agree with Gabby yo creo que es la expresión de lo que Dios es para mí and what I have within my heart and in my heart I have I have the conviction and I have the revelation of who God is. And because I know who God is, then I can always, then I can always be aware of who he is in my life. 
you know, regardless of what is happening or whatever, I feel. So it's the, the expression. My worship to God is my expression of gratitude of what he's done for me. It's my expression of love because how he loves me. It's my expression of, of just honest of everything he who he is not only what he does because that changes but who he is never changes so it's that that is that is where where my my worship comes from from the standpoint of who God is de quien es Dios en mi vida en mi corazón de lo que lo he conocido entonces um, that is what worship is to me yeah, I was going to say the same exact thing of like Gabby and Pastor Erica, um, how Gabby was saying that worship is her way of expressing love to God. Because firstly, the Bible says that love is uh, not selfish. So something that I was telling them is worship, you're not selfish because you're not thinking about yourself. You're thinking about your creator. You're thinking about who he is, like how Pastor Erica said, and what he has done in your life and what he's going to continue to do. Yeah, right. true. Yeah, I I was going to say that too. It's an expression. I'm just kidding. No. Um, <laughs> it's, I we mean, all it's talked in protocol. And <laughs> um, I think it's, I don't think, I think that everything that they said is, when I was hearing them, I was like, yeah, that's true. Because it's such a broad topic. And it's like, what is worship? Like, you know, you hear, lift up your hands, close your eyes. And sometimes we can get so caught up with the doing yeah. that we don't get, that we don't think about the being, you know, like I got to do, I got to pray 30 minutes and or one whole hour to like fit in or to be you know but no like I think t worship to me the best way that I can say is just being like just being there sometimes it's sitting sometimes it's standing it's not monotone it's not like a routine sometimes it's lifting up my hands sometimes it's just closing my eyes sometimes it's almost falling asleep but then waking myself back up and saying God like I want to get to know you and I think worship to me is being in the moment present knowing that he's there in real time like i was sharing with them knowing that he is there that if i was going to go on a date with someone that i love um, that i'm going to be fully present and i'm going to uh give him all my time and i'm going to like tell him about my day and i'm not going to fake it because it's the one person that i can be myself you know i could just be you know and i feel like that's what worship is worship is seeing god you're real. And just as real as I can touch Hasiel right now, just as real as I can give a hug to Chris because I love him or my mom or, you know, whoever, just as real that that is, the moment that I realize, God, I'm just going to be. And you're not a mystical being. You're not a mythical being. You're real. So just as I would talk to Hasiel right now and tell him, hey, Hasiel, this is what's, that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to be and I'm going to talk to him because I know he's real. Yeah. Being aware. Yeah, I was going to say that. I feel like it's, uh, I mean, bouncing off of everybody, worship is so, uh, but I think that it's an awareness that he's with you all the time. It's not worship planned, oh, this is my time of worship. It's like every second is my worship. Every single movement, every single thing I speak. And that's a hard one, even for me. Like, I have to remember constantly that what I say is also worship. So if I'm either worshiping God or I'm worshiping the devil with what I'm saying. So worship isn't just music and, like, I'm singing. It's what I'm acting, what I'm doing my every single thing that I'm doing. And obviously it's hard to be conscious of everything that I do, but that's where the awareness is like, okay, Holy Spirit, I want to be aware all the time. Or constantly make me aware, make me aware, make me aware. So I guess that's what it and is And I think it's important to, to clarify that because I think that a lot of us think that worship is something that we do when we come to church. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or we think that worship is the type of songs that we're singing. You know, those those very slow songs and like those very... Um, the ones that make you cry. Yeah, yeah I was actually going to ask that, yeah. Like, oh, that I'm worshiping God. Let me put on some worship music and now I'm worshiping God. But then like two minutes later, you were cussing out and you were saying all that. So, yeah, that's, that's definitely... Um, you, you mentioned it, and uh, worship is, is in everything we do, is yeah. how we act, is what we do. It's an awareness of the presence of God in our lives. It's an awareness that we don't want to um, bring sadness to the Holy Spirit, that we, don't want to, that we don't want to do things in our own strength. But it's an awareness that God is with us, that he deserves our expression of love and our expression of gratitude, and, and that he, he deserves our, our focus and it's just being aware. I think, I think like Tanya described it, being, it's being aware. 
And it's not like a type of music. It's not something that we do in church. It's something that we do on a, con on a daily basis in our homes. When we're locked up in the rooms, when we're, when we're in our cars. Yeah. I mean, I can say like the best moments of worship don't necessarily happen in church. They happen in when the you're locked up That's in your true. room, when you're That's under pressure, yeah. when you're under a difficult situation. You know, and I can go off and off and off and off. So like, come on. Participate. <laughs> no, this, was, is, this is my kind of jam. I was so. actually I, for real. This is my topic. <laughs> yeah, these these people here are up here for a reason, so they're gonna they're gonna talk. But I was actually gonna ask that that brings me to a really good point that there is a there is a confusion or there is like a I don't know how to say it, but everybody when it when like what you said when people think of worship automatically it's tied to music. How many how many of you guys can say you know what I thought worship was tied like if when I thought of worship I thought of music right away. How many of you guys can say that? Yeah, no, thank you guys for being honest. No, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Because here, here's the thing. Worship isn't music. Music is a tool that helps us worship, right? But what, what Edwin said. Oh, that's said, right. What, what? Say it again. That, we're, that music is a tool that allows us and that helps us to worship. But music itself is not necessarily worship. But um, what, what they were saying is so, so important. Worship, and that takes me to my, my first point. Um, I don't know if you guys can, I have it on the screen, but it's, the, my first point is simply worship is the expression of our love towards God. And it's not any, anything, like, it's not anything complicated. It's not anything else. But, like, up there you, you, can, you can see it doesn't say worship is music. Worship is little slow songs that make me feel nice. Like, no, it's worship is simply the expression of our love towards God. The Bible says in, in Matthew twenty two thirty seven. 37, it says, love, Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. What does that mean? That means that worship is a lifestyle. That means what's in your heart, what's in your mind, what's in your soul. Worship, like, like Pastor Erica said, worship is not just something that you come and you do here at church. What are you, what are you thinking about? What, what kind of emotions are, are in your heart? What, what, what's in your soul? Do you feel, is there, is there emotions in you or is there thoughts in you that, are, that you know that aren't from God? Because if we worship, we, that's how we worship. We, we love God. And I want to ask a question. I want to ask a question. Would you guys, Gabby, would you have married Fer if he didn't express his love towards you? Nah, dude. Para nada. Because <laughs> then how do I know that he genuinely loves me or likes me? Exactly. Mom, would you have married my dad? No. I know. He's handsome. <laughs> that's a I'm handsome man. Right that's there. a red flag, no. ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Tracy, would you have married Diego if, if he didn't express your, your love? She <laughs> well, then, Caitlin, would you marry Dan? <laughs> this is your time, girl. All right, girl. No, even you, girls, girls, you guys that are young and that maybe don't have boyfriends. I hope you guys don't have boyfriends. If you guys don't have boyfriends yet, all that kind of stuff, would you date a guy or would you marry a guy that doesn't show you love? No, right? You would, you're going to date a guy and you're going to marry a guy that's going to show you love, that is going to express your love, that when you guys are out in public, you're going to want him to hold your hand. Like when you guys are at the movies, you guys are going to want to hold hands. Like put, the, put your hands in the popcorn at the same time. I'm just kidding. <laughs> But you guys, you guys are going to want to be Caitlin? with people. Is that what he did? <laughs> I'm not giving you guys the ideas, okay? Okay. So, no, but it's, it's true. Like, I'm gonna, like, for example, I wouldn't have dated Caitlin and she wouldn't have dated me if, if she didn't show me love, you know? And I'm pretty sure that's with everything. And I feel like it's the same with, with God. Like, we... Go ahead. And it's something that we're born with. It's something that it's in us. Like, we were created by God for affection, and to show affection. When we're little, you could see little kids, you know, that they, they know nothing. Están chiquititos, pero tú puedes ver a los bebés como se tiran encima y te agarran a besos. And they, oh, and I love you, mommy. And like, you know, like things like that. It's, it's something that they, that they do naturally. So it's within us. That's why it's not, it's not so hard once, once we understand and we, and we come and we pray and we develop a lifestyle of prayer and relationship with Jesus. It's very easy for us to be that affectionate, even though like maybe in our natural, in our natural environment, we didn't grow up as loving. Yeah. But once God does something in your life, you're like, oh, man, like I just can't. You become that little child that he created you to be to express love and affection. Y yo creo que a veces we overcomplicate it. Siento que a veces, because I've been able to hear people, I'm, I'm trying to speak Spanish, okay, people? But siento que a veces lo, lo complicamos bastante. A veces personas pueden pensar, because I've heard it, I've escuchado personas que dicen like, oh, es que tengo que adorar de una cierta forma, o tengo que orar por tanto tiempo, tengo que hacer tantas cosas. Or they go like, have you seen those videos? And they're like, oh, Heavenly Father, but Jesus in the name of like, and that they go very, 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 and I'm like, I don't know how you guys are talking to 
How are you? How is your time? Because when I talk to God, it's more like, Lord, my day was Help very me. difficult. <laughs> like, did you see what he did today? Like, <laughs> it's a very, porque, I, I think when I became, when I became a mom, I was able to, to, I already knew about God's love, but when I became a mom, I feel like I was able to fully understand the extent of God's love because there's nothing that I wouldn't do for my kids. Like, I love them so much that there's nothing I wouldn't do for them. And I imagine how much more, like, does God feel that for me? And I see that and I'm like, wow, like, I, I love that. In yes, eso, like, sometimes it's so complicated and it's not. And being a parent, like, she's not going to let me lie. I think that there, there's something that happens when your children want to spend time with you. Yeah. It melts your heart. Like, when you go up to your parents and be like, mom, can we just, like, talk? That, even though she doesn't express it or he doesn't express it, it melts your heart. Especially when you're grown and you're too cool now for us. It's like, <laughs> man, every little moment that you get that they want to have time with you, it's like, wow. You know, sometimes we don't show it off so you don't believe it too much, but like we do. It, it melts our heart. But I think about, think about what Gabby was saying. I think that it's the same feeling with God. Yeah. You know, it's that same feeling that every time we come to God and God can say like, wow, you could have done that. You could have done that without me, but wow, the fact yeah. that you acknowledged me, the fact that you brought me and invited me into the picture, mm -hmm. it's like, wow. You know, so I feel like it also melts his heart to when we become so aware of his presence, not, not only in a certain way, but just in our random daily choices that we are aware of his presence. I think that he rejoices because of that. I, I agree. I agree completely. And it takes me to another question. It's like, how how is how would, my, like, how would my parents know? How many of you guys love your parents? Right? Amen? Come on. Some of you guys didn't raise your hand. Hey, I'm just kidding. Now, how, would, how is my mom or how is my dad supposed to know that I love them if I don't show them? If I don't show them love? If I don't ask them, hey, what can I do for you? And I'm not saying, I'm not saying that I'm the perfect son because I don't, I, I don't always do it. So I know I need to get better on it. So. And I'm being accountable publicly. So I'm just kidding. Please. But, no, yeah, how, how, is, how are my parents supposed to know that, that I love them if I don't show them? And this takes me to another point is worship requires a physical expression. Worship is not just like, and when it, when it comes to corporate worship is what we do here at church. Worship requires a physical expression. And that's why you guys see us dance. That's why you guys see us throw our hands up in the air. That's why you guys lift your hands up in the air. Uh, that's exactly like uh, uh, you guys as children. Would you guys feel loved enough if your dad just told you I love you, but he didn't show you that he loved you? Probably not, right? It wouldn't be enough for, for your, your dad to just be like, okay, I love you. And you're like, oh, yes, he loves me. Awesome. No. You want your dad to hug you. You want your dad, uh, when you guys were kids, you would want your dad, your parents to be all over you guys, your parents to buy you guys things, and that's how you would feel loved, right? And it's the same thing. How, how, how are my parents supposed to know that I love them if I don't show them? How is God supposed to know that you guys love him and you guys worship him if you guys don't show him. And that's something very important. And when you guys come to church and when we do corporate worship, because this is corporate worship, when we come and we sing together, we're glorifying God together. Um, how, how is he know? How am I supposed to show him that I love him if I don't, if I don't dance? And not because, not, not that it's a mandatory, right? But it's out of the freedom that he has given us because he has set us free. Because once we were destined to, to you know, be fail, failures or we were destined to, the, to hell or whatever. And now he saved us. That's, that's where it comes from. It comes out of the gratitude, how they, how they were saying. The Bible says in, in uh, 2 Samuel 6.14, it says, David, wearing only a linen cloth around his waist, danced with all his might to honor the Lord. There's an action in there. There's a physical expression. What is it? He danced. He danced for, for God. That's how he was showing God his love. That's how he was showing a God that he was worshiping him, right? And I don't know, that's, that's one of the most extravagant worships that you're ever going to see. Why? Because it says only wearing a linen cloth around. Imagine we all came to church with just linen cloths around our, our waist and we were dancing like crazy. Imagine, imagine Jared, imagine Jared would have danced today that. just with a linen cloth. Like that, would, that would be weird. Let's not imagine that. <laughs> Actually, let's it's not imagine expression. that. <laughs> well, that would be weird. weird. That would be weird. So you think about it. Hey, David's God is the same as yours. David's God is not different than yours. If we have the same exact God, then why can't I worship him the same way? Not, I'm not talking about the, the linen cloth. I'm talking about simply the way that he expressed. Please, on Sunday, don't come with your linen cloth. <laughs> Dress up. 
We're gonna make, we're gonna have like an RG theme night, linen cloth. I'm just kidding. No, no. no but that, that's exactly what I'm trying to say. It's like, man, the way that David worshipped, the way that David expressed physically, because yes, worship is the way that we think. Worship is the way that we feel, our emotions, our thoughts. What are we thinking on the daily? But it's also a physical expression. And I think that um, the second part of the verse where it says, "Dance with all of his might to honor the Lord." So he did it not because he was seeing others doing it. He was not doing it because uh, he was bored. He was doing it to honor the Lord. That was the, that was the motive in his heart. Everything that I do when I raise my hands, when I jump, when I, when I shout, when I whistle, I'm doing it because I want to honor the Lord, because I want to boast about the Lord. You know, it's, you know what boasting is? You know, like you're showing off. You're, you're, bragging. you're, you're bragging about, you know, sometimes when you were a little kid, you were bragging about your shoes or your new bike or whatever, and you were showing off and telling everybody. I think it's the same thing. You know, every time we, every time we, we have those expressions, we're doing it to honor God. We want to tell the world, when, not that... Sometimes people might think that we're crazy or something like that. But in reality, we're telling them, this is what I feel for the Lord. Yeah. And, and in, I'm focusing, I'm, I'm, I'm bringing people's attention to the Lord. Not to me, but to the Lord. I can, I can dance and I can jump and I can sing and I can applaud and I can clap and I can do so many things. Because the Lord is good. Because he's done great things in my life. So when I do it, I'm honoring God and I'm showing you like, hey, look at Jesus. Look at what he's done. Look at what he's capable of. So it's just a, it's just a way of honoring God. I like what you said, Pastor. It's like about honoring him. And it's not about like us. It's not our focus. Because I, I think sometimes we can get caught up in like who can worship him. Oh, only the people that sing up there or only if I go to church, you know, this much or only if I serve or only. But I think like Abby was saying as well, we overcomplicate it because in reality, it's anyone can worship God, you know, like and, and I mean it, anyone, you know, so it's like we don't need to come pre-qualified. We don't need to You don't come, need to have a good voice. You don't need to have a good voice. You don't need like lo que sea, you know, as long as you have hands, feet, you know, mouth, eyes, you know, you have the basic what would I say, like elements, I guess, the, the basic components of being a if human. If you have breath, if pretty you have much. Breath, yes, it. if you're breathing right now, then you can praise and you can worship God because the amazing thing about it is that it's not about us. It's about God. Yeah, and uh, I like that you said uh, breath. Literally, the Bible says everything that has breath, praise the Lord, right? Um, and it, it takes me to something I heard this week is I want you guys to do this with me. I, I, I saw this somewhere and it really, like, it was kind of like, Wow, you know. Um, take it, let's take a deep breath. So one, two, three. So one, two, three, inhale. One, two, three, exhale. I have a question for you. Who gave you that breath? Who gave you that breath? God, right? And this is like, and it's so, it's so easy to breathe, right? Like it's so easy, like God gave us that breath. Um, and it's, he gave us a breath. It's a gift, right? It's a gift from him. Our gift back to God is what we do with that breath. And with that breath, like the word says, everything that has breath, praise the Lord. It doesn't say everything that has breath, go and do crazy stuff at the club. It doesn't say everything that has breath, go and do drugs, go and smoke, go and do all this kind of stuff. No, it says everything that has breath, praise the Lord. And I don't know about you, but I give thanks for the fact that I'm able to breathe today. I'm, I'm grateful for the fact that I'm alive today, that I have my family. So if, if God's gift to me was the breath that I have in my lungs right now, then the least I can do is give it back to him. The least I can do is praise him with, with the breath that he's given me, amen? The least I can do is come and, and sing and, and see my heart out because he set me free. I, if I'm alive, it's because of him. If I have a purpose, it's because he's not done with me yet. So the least I can do is with my breath, I'm going to praise him just as the word says, you know? Yeah. I feel like that's really good. And I feel like what we sometimes go wrong with that is that we fall into comparison. Like we want to say, oh, they're praising because they got a miracle. They got this and they got that. But I didn't get that. Like, we, we forget that. Oh, it's like, oh, I have a breath. Like, he gave me breath. I'm alive right now. And it might seem like, oh, this is so simple. Like, no, that's nothing. Like, that is, that's everything. Like, maybe you had a problem earlier. Maybe you had, a, that's an exact, that's enough. For you. That's all you need. And I know it doesn't feel that way. Because, I mean, we can all relate. We have all fought like that. Like, it's like, oh, man, I want, sorry, I want that. Or I want this to happen. But it always comes back to the simple thing. Everything that has breath, praise the Lord. And it, and it takes me back uh, to what we, the verse we read in the beginning. I don't know if you guys can put it back up. Uh, Matthew 22, 37. Love the Lord your God with all what? Your heart, your soul, your soul and, and your, mind. your mind. And what do I want to say with this? 
True worship requires all three of those things. It requires your heart, it requires your soul, and it requires your mind. If your mind is here at church, but your heart is somewhere else, that's not mm, worship. That's good. But maybe your heart is here, but maybe you're thinking about doing something else later. That's not worship. Worship is when you love the Lord with your, God, with your heart, with your soul, and with your mind. And that's something to think about. Like what we're saying, worship is a lifestyle. Worship is the way that we do things, the way, the way that I think, the way that I feel, everything, everything that I do in my life is worship. The way I treat my parents, the way that I behave at school, everything is worship to God. It's not, it doesn't have anything to do with music. Like I said, music is a tool. But we need to make sure and we need to be self-aware that we're worshiping and we're loving the Lord with our hearts, with our souls, and with our minds. And that's super important. And um, I don't know if you guys uh, feel, feel the same way, but uh, and it takes me, what Edwin was saying takes me to my second point. Uh, we were asking, what is worship? Worship is, the first, the first point is the expression of our, of our love towards God, right? Uh, number two, worship is sacrifice. Worship is sacrifice. And it takes me to another verse, Genesis 22.5. Right, this, this is a story of Abraham. How many, how many of you guys know Abraham? I'm assuming you guys all know Abraham. Abra God had asked Abraham to sacrifice his, his son. It was the son of the promise. He, he promised Isaac. Uh, he had promised Abraham and his wife Sarah to, that he was going to give him a child. The child of the promise was Isaac. But then after he had this child, God asks him to sacrifice his son. And so the, the Genesis 22.5 says, He said to his servants, Stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there. We will worship and then we will come back to you. And, and I learned this as well this week. He says, We will worship. But in reality... He was saying, I will go over there and sacrifice what I most love, and then I will come back. He didn't know yet that God was going to tell him, don't kill him. Because he was, he was, he was being obedient. He was, he was ready and willing to sacrifice his son, his son that God had promised him. He was willing to be obedient to God and say, you know what, I'm going to do it. If you're asking for him, then I'm going to do it. It doesn't matter how much it hurts me. And he was, he was ready. He was willing and he, he said, we will worship. But in reality, in his mind, he was, Isaac didn't know. Isaac didn't know that he was about to be killed, sacrificed. But Abraham said, let me go and sacrifice the thing that I love the most, the person that I love the most, and then I will come back. Eventually, obviously, you guys know the story that God told him right in the moment where he was about to sacrifice his son. God told him no. But this takes me to my point. Worship is sacrifice. What is it that is worth the most to you guys? That's what you have to sacrifice and give to God. Yeah. Our worship needs to cost us something. Yeah. It's, a, it's an act of surrender. So worship is an opportunity for us to surrender. To surrender to God what we love the most. To surrender our emotions. To surrender uh, those things that are very close to our heart. You know, those things, that, those things that are sometimes in the way of God or in the place of God in our hearts. When we work, it requires sacrifice because, because sometimes we don't want to let go of our comfort. So it requires an effort for you to probably uh, stop doing what you're doing so you can focus on God. It requires sacrifice because it requires an effort for you to come to the house of God and not go to the party and go somewhere else wherever you wanted to go. But it requires an effort. It's a sacrifice when sometimes, sometimes we're tired. Sometimes we're sad. Sometimes we don't feel like doing or, ha or giving an expression of love to God. But once you do it anyway, knowing that that he's still worthy regardless of what's happening and he still deserves the honor and the power and the glory so and it's his so i think it, that's where the sacrifice comes when you surrender how you feel when you surrender what you want when you surrender those things that are close to your heart to say god i re this is very dear to me but i'm going to lay it down because you are more important to me than everything else um i fell and what I was going to say right now is sacrifice, I feel some uh, worship is sacrifice when everything's going good with your life. Because sometimes I feel like when everything's going good in your life, you sometimes forget about God. And you're like, oh, everything's fine in my life. But then when everything, when there's a storm going, going around in your life, you're like, oh, my God. Okay, I need to sacrifice this so I can get out of this situation. Like, God, I'll give you everything just so I can get out of this situation. But truly the sacrifice is when everything's fine and you're still acknowledging him. Or when everything's going, like, terrible, and then you acknowledge, like, 
like in the same way. Because sometimes it's like you're fixated on that anxious thought, you know, or you're fixated on that worry. And, and that happened to me this week. I was so fixated on this worry that I can't control. Because in my personality, I like to have everything structured and I like to know what's going to happen at what time and who's going to be there and whatnot. And God doesn't work that way, you know. We know God, he's, he asks us to move in faith a lot. And so, and so to me, this week, it was God. I literally just told him. And I was worshiping and I couldn't concentrate for some reason. I was like, I can't concentrate, God, and I really want to. And it comes with what Pastor Rick was saying. I sacrificed that anxious thought. Because for some reason, I didn't want to let it go. I was in worship, but I was like, God, I'm worshiping you, but remember, this is what I'm going to ask. And unconsciously, I was like, after I'm done worshiping, I already know my petitions, you know. And, but, um, so I was like, once I'm done and I, I get a good grip of my worship, I'm going to ask him, God, I need this, I need that. And then I just stopped myself and I was like, God, I sacrifice this worry. I, I let it go, God. I don't want to take it anymore. I don't want to think about it anymore. I give it to you. You know, I sacrifice this sin, perhaps, of this that has been tempting me. God, I let it go. Because sometimes it's not a physical thing. Sometimes it's something that you're mentally thinking about or lingering on or it's something that you keep on failing that you're like, oh, well, I'm not worthy to do this. So, But sometimes it's just like, I just got to sacrifice it. You know, I just got to say, God, I let it go. That's it. And I think if we go back to the verse that we read about honoring God or why David danced, I think that we need to sacrifice or surrender all of those things that are not honoring God. Yeah. So David did it because it honored the Lord, but I'm pretty sure there's a lot of things that we do that we don't honor the Lord with. So we require, it, there's a, we need to surrender them to God yeah. right. so we can worship him uh, with the choice of surrendering that thing that is not bringing honor to him. So obviously, you know, like there's, there's things that, do you, there's a lot of things that young people ask, well, is this a sin or is this a sin or can you do this and can you do that? What about worldly music? What about this and what about that? And what about secular things? Well, and obviously the Bible says that you can do all things, but not, things are, not all things are beneficial. But I, I take it back to, does it honor God? Yeah. Is it honoring God? Are you honoring God with the way you dress? Are you honoring God with the way you speak? Are you honoring God with the way you're acting with your friends? Are you honoring God with everything that comes out of your mouth? Are you honoring God with how you're behaving at home? Are you honoring God with your, with your, with your thoughts? So it goes back to surrendering all of those things that don't lead us to honor God. And uh, I, really want you, I really want you guys to think how, like this. This uh, conversation is, is, I guess the whole heart of it is just, I want you guys to think about, like, I, wanna, I wanted to make you guys think about how your relationship with God is. I wanted to, what, what Pastor Eric was saying, what are you guys, what, what is your mind like? What does your mind look like? What does your heart look like? What are my priorities? We all, we all know, like, I don't have to tell you that God should be your first place. Like, you, you, like we know, like, God should be our first place. But is he our first place? You know, is there things that are taking his place in my life? Is there things that are like I'm prioritizing over prayer? Are there things that I'm prioritizing over maybe reading the Bible? Are there things I'm prioritizing uh, over worshiping him, over serving him? And I want you guys to really think about it. I don't want this to be a conversation that just kind of sparks up a little bit emotion or just kind of, you know, maybe or maybe doesn't even provoke anything in you. I want this conversation to cause you to think about and to become self-aware in regards to your re relationship with God. Uh, I just want to add that I'm pretty sure we all know what sacrifice means. It means it costs something. And that means it's not going to be easy. And I'm a really emotional person. I mean, everybody that knows me here, and I'm, I'm emotional. <laughs> just a tad and so just a tad. to me, to sacrifice something, it costs me a lot. Like, it's not easy for me. For me to be like, God, okay, here it is. This is what you're asking for. I, I struggle. I overthink it. I will think everything about it and try to get out of it. But obviously, I know what it means to give to God. And if I value God so much... And I can say with my words and I can be this show if I want to be or I can do whatever I want. But I don't want you to prove it in private. It's not going to mean anything. Like if it's God is asking, okay, give me this friendship. Give me this. Give me that. Whatever you want. You can put your own name to it. And if you want to do it right now, actually go for it. I want you to think of a sacrifice that God has been asking you for. And I'm not telling you, oh, you're doing something wrong. No, like God is constantly asking us for sacrifice to all of us. It's a continual thing because God wants us to be holy with him. And obviously, if we're living here, we have things that 
we get attached with growing up. We have this and we have that, whatever you want to put to it. So I just want you to close your eyes for like 30 seconds. Just think, God, what, I, I ask the Holy Spirit right now, what are you asking from me? What do you want me to sacrifice? What can I give to you that could be worshipped to you and nothing holding me back anymore? Yeah, just think for a bit. What is God what is God asking you for? And I think it's not going to be necessarily something that is bad in your life. Because if you think about Abraham when he was Abraham when the sacrifice yeah. um, when they were asking for his son Isaac. Isaac was not something bad. Isaac was a blessing from God. That's true. Isaac was a promise of God to this man and yet he was asking for it something that Abraham waited for so long to have but sometimes those blessings that God gives us take God's place yeah, it's true. and sometimes we got to surrender them and sometimes God is going to push you to say are you willing to give that to me because that that shows what matters the most to your heart Maybe you prayed to the Lord to bless you for, with a job. And the Lord blessed you, but now the job became more important than God. Maybe God blessed you with a relationship that you asked him and you prayed for. it, But now that relationship is, is, is more of a priority than God in your life. So not, it wasn't necessarily that it was something bad because Isaac was the promise. He, God had, had promised to Abraham that he was going to give him that son. So it, it was from God, but it was just a matter of, of also checking what was on, on Abraham's heart. Is your heart still attached to me or is it, or is it attached to the promise that I gave you? Yeah. Is it a promise? Is it attached to the miracle that I gave you or is it really attached to my heart yeah. and to my person and to who I am? Am I still God to your life? Or maybe you're a fo your focus shifted to Isaac. Something that well, came no, to my that, heart. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, that, that spoke to me. That was awesome. Um, I don't know if you guys can, I'm, I'm sure some of you guys can identify with, with what we're talking about. And I hope that, I hope that this conversation is, is challenging you to want to grow in, not only in your relationship with God, but just being self-aware and making sure that our lives are worship, that our lives are, are honoring God. Uh, the, way that, the way that David honored him, I want to honor him the same way, not because, I'm not trying to compare myself, but the, that's an example, you know, the way that he honored and. And I heard something else this week that, that really blew my mind, too, um, as I was just studying and, and learning a bit more. And, and you guys can open your eyes now if you guys um, still have them closed. But um, I, was, I was hearing them there. <laughs> you guys will sleep party. <laughs> no, I, was, um, I, was, I heard somebody say, I heard somebody say, speaking Do about this. Do not sacrifice RG. I'm sorry. <laughs> spe speaking about this, about worship being sacrificed, I heard somebody say this week, Give God the worship here on earth that you can't give him in heaven. And I don't know that some of you guys maybe can't understand that, but I'll, I'll explain it. What does that mean? The Bible says that we're going to worship for all eternity. Once we get to heaven, we're going to just worship. And we're going to sing with the angels and the elders. And we're just going to sing and we're going to sing and we're going to sing. And we're going to say holy, holy, holy. And we're, we're, not, we're never going to stop, right? That's going to be our, our lifestyle. Our life is just going to be spent worshiping. But the key thing is that in heaven, there's no confusion. In heaven, there's no pain. In heaven, there's no suffering. In heaven, you're not going to be crying. In heaven, there's no anxiety. There's no depression. What, what am I trying to say? Here, you deal with those things. So give them the worship here that you're not going to be able to give them in heaven. If you're dealing with anxiety, worship him. If you're dealing with depression, worship him. If you're sick, worship him. If you're dealing with loss in your life, worship him. If you're going through a problem in a tough situation, worship him. That's sacrifice. Worship is, is it's a sacrifice when we worship out of a position of, you know what, God, I, I, I'm in the worst position of my life, maybe that I can be, but I'm still going to worship you. And I hope that you guys were able to understand that because when I heard that this week, oh my, like it, it really like, it blew my mind. It's like, man, we, we have the, it's a privilege that we get to worship him here when we're going through struggles that we're not going to get in heaven. Yes, our worship in heaven is going to be beautiful. But our worship here on earth, when we're going through tough situations, is, it's equally as beautiful. And, that, and that's something that I hope that you guys are able to, to understand. 
And I think that is something that I want to, that I relate a lot with. Yo creo que um, hace un año atrás, yo creo que, I don't know if some of you knew, pero hace un año atrás eh, yo tuve que ir a hacerme unos exámenes al doctor y cuando recibí los resultados me dijeron que tenía que ir a un centro de, de cáncer. Entonces, obviamente cuando tú escuchas cáncer de parte del doctor, it freaks you out, it shocks you. No matter how how much in the how much in the spirit you walk, I think it's it's always shocking. And um, I remember that it was such a difficult time porque cuando yo fui cuando yo fui, I think no me acuerdo cuánto tiempo pasó como un proceso de unas semanas de dos semanas donde donde yo dije que okay, yo no voy a ir al centro de cáncer pero voy a ir a a un doctor y and I refused. Lo primero que se me vino a la mente es okay, once they give you the news, you're like okay, now what? And I think that in the moment, the first thing that I did, my first reaction was, okay, God, I know who you are, and I'm not going to believe anything else, and I'm just going to focus on you, and I'm going to worship you, and you have a purpose for me, and I am alive for a purpose, and you have a plan, so I'm going to shut my ears to whatever the world is saying, and even though this is reality, there's a truth above that reality that I'm going to believe, and I'm going to stand for, and I'm going to believe Psalms 138.8, and I, and I shifted my attention to, to God, and I remember that for two weeks I went and I and I was waiting for the results uh, to come back. Um, and while I waited those two weeks, I don't know how many of you guys have been in a situation like that, but if you have been waiting for like some uh, doctor results for like two weeks and, and the word cancer is evolved, it was it was such a it was such a distressful moment. But I think that one of the things that kept me grounded and peaceful and secure was the awareness of God in my life. And it was a moment of sacrifice that I said, okay, I am surrendering doubt, anxiety, insecurities, and everything. I'm going to bring it every morning. And I remember that every moment that a thought came to my mind, I grabbed the thought and I was like, but my, my God is greater and my God is good. And no matter what happens, no matter what the outcome is, God is still God. And if he has me here and he keeps me here, it's because I have a purpose. And if I go, with, if I go to heaven with Jesus, it's because he, his purpose already ended. So it doesn't matter. And I would remind myself. And I, think, and, I, and I don't think I ever told this because I'm a person that I don't want to, that I don't like to burden others. And, um, but maybe probably he's like noticed um, my moments of my moments of worship increased so much in that in that season or from that season of my life because every time something came to my mind I brought it back to God and it's like it came to me and I brought it back to God and it required a sacrifice because because it does require like your mind is, is so tricky like it plays tricks on you and it and it becomes so real whatever you're waiting through and whatever you're going through but i remember that it was those moments where i was just still knowing who was god in my life and i think that that moment when i got the results and obviously we prayed and we prayed and we prayed and a lot of people prayed and fasted our core team our, our spiritual uh, parents prayed and and they fasted with me and the in our core team prayed and fasted with me and we believed the lord and thank god everything came back negative and there was nothing to worry about and the and the outcome was great it was pray we praised god for that but i think that is something that has touched me so much because and it always takes me back to Paul and Silas because Paul and Silas were in a very difficult moment of their life when they were imprisoned in Acts 16 if you have time go and read it in Acts 16 Paul and Silas were in were in jail they were in prison they were beaten they were they were in a very bad situation of their life but instead of reacting like all out of control and mad and and upset and doing something the first thing they did is they started praising god and they started worshiping god and what happened when they started doing that is that the open the 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 doors to the jail opened up and god broke the chains off and i was able to witness that in my life i believe god opened the doors of healing for my life I believe God broke the chains of sickness over my life. They were broken and I was set free from all sickness in Jesus' name because that, that moment of worship and praise, because that's what it causes. 
It brings such a breakthrough to your life. It brings such a shift in your life that no matter, no matter what is happening, it changes prayer and worship is something that we must practice daily. Because when we do, we will see how the doors open. We will see how God responds. We will see the hand of God. You will see things that were set for your, for the, from the enemy. But you will see God turning all those things for good. And I can testify of that. And that's why, that's why this is something so close to my heart. And something that I, that I can talk and talk and talk and talk about. And if you guys don't interrupt, I can keep on talking about it. Because I've lived it and I've seen it. I've experienced it. So nobody can tell me that praising and worshiping. God is a waste of time if I'm in my car you will hear that I am praising and I'm singing I am making up my songs and I am singing to God and I'm saying God you are faithful you are good you are wonderful you're amazing last week we were stuck in we were we were in on vacation in Cancun and there was a hurricane threat and da 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 da, da and there was so much commotion and I was at peace and you can ask Luis we were at such peace But every, every moment that anxiety wanted to, to come into my life, I was like, nope, God, you are good. You brought us here. You will take us back. I'm in, I'm in your hands. You're in control. You have a purpose. You have a plan. So you're going to take us back and da-da-da-da. But all of that is awareness of his presence. I was like, if you, if you, God cares about me. And if he cares about me, and this is something that in that process, you guys got to talk, okay? Because... If you don't stop me, I won't stop. If um, in, that pre in that process of the sickness or the, the, the results that I was waiting for, this is what I told myself. God loves me. Whatever the outcome is, God is still good and God still loves me. If everything is good, which I declare that it is, and, I, and God keeps me here on earth for a long time, is he, he loves me and he wants me here on earth. But if he, for some reason, decided to take me to his presence, it's because he loves me and he wants me to be with him. Yeah. So there's nothing to fear, Erica. There's nothing to fear because you are in God's hands. That is what, and that brought such a peace to me for the entire time that we waited. Yeah. When you worship, you will, you will be led to a, to a state of peace yeah. in your life. That's true. When you're confused and you worship, it leads you. It, you enter into a, a state yeah, of peace. That's true. that's true. And I would like, Kaylin, share your testimony. I know you have a powerful testimony as well about worship. So really quickly, I, I think it ties along very well. So go ahead, go ahead and share your testimony. Yeah, so um, I relate a lot with Pastor Erica, not with the part of, of the sickness, but the part of uh, testifying, of knowing who God is in the middle of, of a storm in your life. When I was in high school, I passed through depression and anxiety, very hard, like hardcore depression and anxiety, to the point that I had to get homeschooled. I couldn't be in school because I would get random panic attacks and they had to take me out of class. Um, my mom wanted to put me in medication, but I didn't want to because I was like, no, putting me in, in, in medication will conform me to my situation. I was like, I know that God is good and I know that God is great and he's going to take me out of this. And it's really hard because I come from a home where my, my family doesn't come to church. So I couldn't go running to my mom and say, Mom, pray for me, please. Like, I'm having a panic attack, you know. I had to go shut myself in my room. I would shut myself in my room and I would pray for hours. And I don't mean just an hour. I would pray for hours. I would shut myself there and get to know God. Get to know who he's saying that I am and where he's going to take me. Because I was like, okay, God, I know your plans are good. I know that your plans for me are this and that, you know. So even though I, I believe it was like two years where I passed through depression and anxiety, every single day I would wake up and I would start having a panic attack. I'm like, no, oh my God, It's okay. I'm like, I don't know how long this is going to last for. I don't know how long I'm going to be going through this. I was like, but I refuse. I refuse to give in, and I will trust, and I will know who you are. Even though it takes me three years or four years or five years, I will continue to worship you. I will continue to praise you, and I will get to know you as God, my counselor, God, my friend, God, my father, God, my salvation. Yes, that's, yeah, that's awesome. Uh, well, you want to go? Go. No, no, go for it, go for it. I don't have a testimony, so if it's a testimony, go for it. No, no, go for it. So, <laughs> all of this is really making me think, and I kept thinking about it. Um, Apostle preached something, I believe it was last, last Sunday, and he was preaching about what makes me think that God can free me, or que me hace pensar que Dios me puede librar. And, and one of, he gave three ways, like three kind of key points of what, how we can remember in those moments, and one of them is, is I remember my past. 
I remember that God already did it. And sometimes when we're stuck in the middle of a moment or we're stuck in, in depression, anxiety, or in, 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 in we're waiting for results or we're waiting for God to respond or simply everything's okay, but we just feel empty or void. And in my case, it was just, there was so much chaos in my home and there was so much domestic violence and there was so much aggression, so many things that, that I just had no clue. And now every time I worship, I think that's always my thought. I always, for me, it's always a sense of gratitude. When I come in here, and I always try, hold on, getting emotional, give me a second. <laughs> I always try that whenever I worship, God, it always comes back to my mind. The sense of loneliness and the sense of depression and the sense of fear, because I was very fearful back then. Um, and the sense of rejection and everything. And I always remember where God took me from to bring me here. Right. And that, every time I remember that, I always think like, how could I not? How could I not praise God? Because I don't have to be fearful anymore. I don't have to be scared. I don't have the depression. I don't have the anxiety. I don't have, and when the moments come, because moments will come. The Bible doesn't say that, that your life is going to be free of, but like, no, you're going to have situations and you're going to have trials, but you don't have to do it alone. God is with you. Like God says that he's going to guide you through them. He's going to be with you through it all. And when I've had those moments, I go to, number one, I go to my pastors because they're, they're my direct leaders in this aspect. And I go to them and I say, hey, I'm struggling with this. But before I go to them, sometimes I go to God. And I say, I'm having these thoughts or I'm feeling these emotions again. And I don't want to feel those emotions again. And when the thought of doubt starts to come in my mind of like, well, you shouldn't feel this way. I remember, wait, God already took me from there. And the second point that he gave was like that to remember my 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 future, my presente, and of what God can do and remembering his promises. And there's so much, I think, that if we remember, if you take a moment to simply remember how good God has been in your life, whether that has been in your family, whether that has been emotionally, mentally, physically, a healing, a miracle, financially, whatever it is, if you take a moment to genuinely remember, because I think everyone here worships obviously because they love God, but it's also because we remember how good he is. In all of this moment, we mentioned that, that how, how much we, we express our love to God and how much we love God. But the truth is, if you have not been expressing your love to God, he still loves you. That hasn't changed. If Nathaniel or Emma don't show me love, if Nathaniel or Emma don't come and give me hugs, will it make me sad? Yes. Would I still give my life for them in a heartbeat? Yes. And God is, God is that way. God, regardless if you've made that intimate time with him or not, that doesn't mean that he doesn't love you, but you benefit from making that sacrifice, from making that effort to connect with him, from being able to receive and give the love that you are being, that you are receiving. And when I understood that, when I understood that how much God loved me, every time that I worship, I always think the same thing. God, thank you. If there is one thing that I'm grateful for, and I've always said it, is my salvation. Because God knows where I would be. God knows where any of us would be if it wasn't for that. And right now that you said the word thank you, maybe that's what worship, that maybe is going to be the initiation of your worship to God. Just thank him. You know, just thank him throughout your day. Thank him for everything. Even if you feel like it's, it's, you're, you're exaggerating, thank him. Thank him every time you wake up in the morning. Thank him for your life. Thank him for your family. Thank him for your job. When you're on your way to work, thank him for, thank him for the trees that you see. Thank him for the car that you drive in. Thank him for the, 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 the lunch that you're able to get. Every time you pray for your food, you're thanking God. You're honoring God. You're worshiping him. When you're serving him, obviously serve, serving, serving God um, in within his house is a way of worship. So maybe maybe you said, well, I haven't developed a lifestyle of worship. Maybe it's going to start with just Thanksgiving. Yeah. Maybe you don't know what to say. Maybe you don't know how to express it. Everybody knows how to say thank you. So just start thanking the Lord, and then the Lord will lead you yeah. to other things. And little by little, little, by little you're going to see how you're just going to start. Um, it's just going to start flowing in your life. Yeah, I agree. And I know, like, for sake of time, we're, we're going to have a time to worship. And you're probably like, okay, now I want to worship. I want to worship already. But... I think it's 100% true. Um, and it's like thanking him. Because I remember when my grandma passed away, which was kind of recent, there was like a before and an after, right? I remember exactly the day before she passed away and the day after she passed away. And I remember both days I woke up thanking him, but both days it looked different. 
It was like a before and an after. It was the, I remember the, the first day, it was like, God, thank you, because I kid you not, I think God knew that my spirit needed to say this, but I was like, God, thank you, because everything is great in my life right now. And I was like, thank you, because everybody they, that I care about, I remember vividly making that prayer. I was like, thank you, because everybody that I care about is living and I said, in this moment, I will never again be in this moment where I can say every, like my life feels like complete. And then the next day, you know, she passed away. And I remember I still thanked God. I was like, thank you, God, because, and I told him, I was like, it's funny because yesterday I was making this prayer, but now it looks different, but still thank you. Because I was like, I will not be able to take care of her as good as you will take care of her. And it was a different level of gratitude. And I, I believe that it was like, um, like what Pastor Erica was saying, it was like I ran to his presence. And I had so many questions. I had so many doubts. I had so much anger, not towards God, but towards like the circumstance. But I remember I was just like, thank you, God. Thank you. And maybe my thank you didn't look the same as the day before but it was still a, a gratitude, you know? And right now, we're gonna have some time to worship. I'm sure uh, Jazz is gonna take, you know, not take us, but you know, um, give the pauta para que we can worship all together. But in that same spirit, you know, right now, I don't know how your life maybe is looking like. Maybe you do say like, God, I just, you will never get today back again, you know? Like you will never get July 12th at 8.55 again to worship him and to be this age and to be in this day. And I remember when I turned 23, I was like, God, when I'm, I wanna give you the best 23 years of my life, 24, I wanna give you the best 24 years. And then one day I was like, you know what, God, I'm already 25. I'm gonna give you the best 25 at 8.55, July 12th, that I could possibly give you. Because today, I don't know what's gonna happen tomorrow. Like that day, you know, I was just like, I didn't know. For, for some reason it was like, God, why me? And God's like, well, why not you? You know, like things could happen. But just today, I want to have the satisfaction of saying, God, I'm in an RG service. I can worship you and give you my best worship today. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, Adam, you wanted to share something? Yeah. Quick. Um, I want to be obedient to God. Uh, does anybody have a pair of keys by any chance? There's just a pair of keys. Like keys, anybody, keys, keys. Buenas Gabis. Just really quick. I, just, I feel like I heard something earlier and I want to be obedient to it. So earlier I was sitting in the back and I was asking God, I was like, okay. Um, well, the whole week since Jazz told me that I was going to be part of this, I was asking God. I didn't hear anything. I was like, okay, that's fine. I opened the Bible. I read nothing. Um, and then today in the back, I feel like it was the simplest thing. And uh, I was talking to Fernanda, our lighting girl. If you don't know Fernanda, go Fernanda. Um, <clears throat> and out of nowhere, I, I heard a jingle, like a, like a keys jingling, like like right behind me and I was like, okay. Like, I asked Fernanda, I was like, did you hear that? And she was like, no, she was like, what? And I was like, oh, some keys like jingled or like a jingle and I was like, uh, she was like, no. And then I turned around and I was like, there's no one around me. <laughs> so I felt crazy and then I was like, okay, that's fine, whatever, I'll let it go. Um, and so right now I, I, saw, I was, I, I, I don't know who was talking, oh, Pastor Eric was talking. And they brought me back to my connection group. And my connection group, the first thing I start with is testimonies. Okay, okay does anybody have a testimony? Like something that God did in your life. Um, and we all share something simple, something big, something small, whatever it is. And I don't want you to undertake what a testimony does to someone else. These people have lived through things. Depression, anxiety, healing and uh, answers, depression, uh, passings in your family. And our testimonies are not just stories. They're things God, that God has done. And that those things are able to move into your life. Because it's not a God that's like, oh, he, she did it in, he did it in her end, that's it, he did it in jazz, he did it. No, he's doing it in all of us. Yeah. So I feel like when I heard this jingle, it was things falling. And I'm not trying to be religious, it's just, I, I literally, physically right now, I was like, okay, and God brought it back to me. This is what it was. Our, when we have an opportunity to worship, you're going to feel, and you're gonna, I, I'm, I'm praying that the prophetic thing that I heard of this, you're able to feel it, and you're able to hear it. That they literally, you feel the chains and all the answers and everything that you are feeling, it just falls off. So maybe you don't believe much right now and maybe you think I'm crazy because maybe I am. But I believe in God and I know what God spoke to me. So I pray that over you. I pray that all these testimonies, I'm pretty sure one of us can relate to each and every one of these testimonies. And I pray that they become life in you. 
I pray that it's not just a spoken word that it's hitting the back and that's it. I pray that it hits you and that God speaks to you. So take it as you will and amen. Yeah, I, I really hope that you guys are, are able to understand. How many of you guys are understanding something? How many of you guys are learning something, amen? Um, and I hope that we're able to put it in, into practice. What have we learned? Worship is our, our expression of love towards God. Worship is sacrifice. Uh, worship is for his pleasure. It's for him. Worship is for God. Worship is not about us. Worship is not for us. Um, and I want you guys to really understand that. When, we're, when we communicate, when, we're, when we say, when we make worship about us, about how I feel and about this and about that, we're communicating to God that worship is for us when it's not. Worship is about him. Worship is for him, for his pleasure, for his honor, for his glory. And I want to conclude with this. And it's, it's my fourth point. I don't know if you can put it on the screen. But in worship, we know him. He knows us. And we also know who we are in him. And it's, it's the, the, the title of my preaching. The one who knows it all still wants to get to know me. Still wants to get to know you. Because in worship, in worship, we get to know him. It's a two-way street. I get to know him. But he also gets to know me. And I also get to know what he thinks of me, what he says about me. And the Bible says that Jesus, Jesus died to reconcile us back with the Father. Why would, God, why would God send Jesus to reconcile us back with him? Because he wants to know us. He wants to know who we are. He wants to know how we are. And he also wants us to get to know him. And I, I have these, what do you guys know what these are? These are hammers. And I think this is a little bit more for perhaps leaders, perhaps people that are actively serving. But it, this is about, worship is about getting to know God. And it's also about God getting to know us. And I want to say this. Uh, and I want to finish with, with this. God didn't create you to use you. He created, so, he created you so that he could know you. And it's something that, I've, something that I've learned and it's something that impacts me a lot. He didn't create you so that you can use you. We use tools. We use hammers. We use this. God didn't create you so that you can be used by him. Even though you are going to be used by him and you are going to serve him and you are going to do all that stuff. He created you so that he could know you. So that he can know you and so that you can know him. And... That's exactly my point. You guys see a hammer right here. This hammer is perfectly fine, right? We can use it. We can use it. It's perfect. You guys know what this is for. But there's another hammer right here. What? You guys see this hammer. What's wrong with it? It's broken. It's broken, right? So if we were, if this is something that I learned. Religion teaches us to see ourselves as tools. That the better I do things, the more valuable I am to God. And that's not true. The, and and that's, how, that's how we learn. Sometimes we learn, the more I do, the more I do, the more I do. The more I do here at church, the more, the better, the better I'm going to be treated. The more I do, the higher I get, whatever. Religion teaches us to see ourselves as these hammer. And we, sometimes we say leaders, people that are actively serving, we say, God, I want to be your favorite hammer. God, I want you to use me the most. Use me to do this. Use me to do that. Use me, use me, use me. But we don't have a relationship with him. We serve and we serve and we serve and we're serving so actively. We're serving in all these things. We have like six ministries under our belt, but we don't pray. But we're not reading the Bible. Yes, God is using us, but he doesn't know us. What's the point of that? Religion teaches us to, sh to, to be like this, to be like this hammer. But what's the problem? What's the problem with this? What's the problem with seeing ourselves as this hammer? That once we're broken, we just throw it away. And... If we, if, we don't, if we don't serve anymore, if, we, if God is not using us anymore, then we're of no value whatsoever. And that's not the way that God wants, to, that God wants you to see yourself. That the less, the less that I serve, the less value I have. That's not true. And I have, the, I have this written down. It's something that I've learned that it's so, so important. Religion is this. I am because I do. Worship is I do because I am. And I don't know if you guys understand that. I, I, don't, I hope that somebody was able to capture that. Religion, religion teaches us to, to, to that I am because I do. I am because I serve. I am because I help this person. I, I help. I am because I give so much money to church. I am because of all these things. But God is saying that now we get to do because we are. We get to do because he calls us his children. We get to do because he calls us his friends. We, we get to do because he redeemed us on the cross. We get to do because he already died for our sins. That's why now we get to do this because God already did all that for us. 
We're talking, we're telling our testimonies. We're saying everything that God has taken us out from. We worship because of gratitude. We worship because of everything that God has already done in our lives. And I don't know if you guys understand that. We do now. Now I get to do. Now I get to serve. Now I get, now God gets to use me because he already, I, because of who I already am. And something important, we cannot worship if we don't know who we are in him. Only, a, and I, I, I said this a couple weeks ago in, in our worship service. Only a true son or daughter can reach a level of intimacy with the father. Only a true son, only a son can run to his arm, to the arms of his father. Only you guys can run to the arms of your, of your parents. It's the same way with God. If you don't know that you are a son, if you don't know that you're a daughter of God, you cannot reach that level of intimacy with God. You cannot have a relationship with him if you don't know that God, you know what, I am your son. You can't see yourself as just, oh, I'm a creation of God. God created me. Cool. No. I'm a son. I'm a daughter of God. And therefore, I can reach a level of intimacy that no one else can. And I hope that you guys are able to capture that. Capture that and say, you know what, God, I'm a son. I'm a son and therefore I get to worship. And I get to, I get to do all this. I get to do what God has called me to do because I am. Because I am his son. I am free. I am delivered. Amen.